Today I am going to explain you the theory of top tower effect test. The question arises when already we have the ISOC and the Charki tests are available, then why we are doing this test? So we can answer this test only when we will know what the top tower impact test. So let go and understand the test. What is actually happening here? and uh, what are the components of the machine so how it is how it worked actually so you can see this is a motorized cross head which moves on the or which slides on the on these four pillars with the help of this motor which is connected to this with the chain so we are moving it at the desired position with the help of this motor this is connected motorized cross side is connected to the top holder here this top holder supports the load cell here you can see a wire this wire is connected to this component this is called the load cell which will measures the contact force which will measure the contact force okay and this is connected to the top top is a picture which will be go and impact on the specimen so let's see what is actually happening this is the top top can be of different shape so just presently i'm using the hemispherical and you can see this is a is is a specimen it is this top is at a particular height of h and having a mass m so initially it is at rest initial velocity is zero we will allow it to free fall as soon as this top will come in contact with the specimen then it will come hit it and it will be deformed this specimen so whole theory of the drop tower impact test starts as soon as it will come in contact with the specimen as soon as it come into it contact with the specimen this load cell starts to take the data and it will give us the force versus time graph okay in the further slides or the further i will tell you all the things in detail just i have explained you here little bit about the machines if you are more interested about the machine we can go in the instron and we can read about the machine okay every type of machine so you can see it here this is the drop tower impact testing machine with this this is a motorized control and this is a portion where we are keeping the specimen okay and this will come and hit it hit it or free fall on the specimen then we will come to know how much energy it has absorbed so you can go on the strong site and you can read the catalog with the different fixtures or the different tubs available all of these things you can read it easily here this is 9400 series okay so you can read all of these things so we are going to see the different types of tubs available first tub first, first type is the hemispherical tub in the hemispherical the tip which is going to strike the specimen is the hemispherical actually it is the half of the spherical and its diameter is 12.7 mm okay similarly we have the another tub is the charpy tub or that is actually a trapezoidal type of tub here you can see it's going it is having the 20 mm in width and 5 mm in front width okay so you can see it is of this shape actually
This stop rod may be the rectangular or it may be the circular, but if you will go with the instrument, it will if they are giving us the circular supported tub with the trapezoidal shaped tub or this is what we call the chart meter. Actually, what type of tub we are going to use which is going to impact the specimen depend upon the ASTM. Okay, actually this chart meter we are going to impact it with the this type of samples. And you know what type of samples it is. This will go and this with this front side this will go and impact it here okay so similarly we have the another we have the another type of tub which is available is the conical tub in the conical tub you can see it is having the circular rod and having a cone shape okay and this is also of having the same diameter that is 12.07 and this radius is also of 6.35 mm similarly we have the another type of the tub okay in which so I am not exactly remembering the uh, name but you will see a tub of this okay we have the circular this all we are using for a puncture type of test in which this diameter is 50.8 mm and the tip radius is actually 6.3 mm okay so this type of tubs are available different types of tubs are available and all this depends upon the a which ASTM we are going to use and the which type of boundary conditions we are going to use actually okay nice the tub what we are using here here you can see this is the hemispherical tub can you recall can you say what is this this is actually a fixture we will just go in the next slide here which type of tub is there this is the chart meter or you can say this is a trapezoidal shaped tub okay now what are the different types of specimen holder we have available okay so that is very important actually here and I am again saying this all depends upon the ASTM which ASTM we are going to use what they are saying ki, which type of test we have to go for example this is a puncture test in which we are going see actually this is the same picture we will first see this picture in this picture we have kept the aluminium sample with a V notch here okay and the tub will come and impact it here this portion this is to adjust this notch at the center okay when we will remove this part okay remove this part so only this part will wrapped with zero support so here this is the same thing so what is going to be happened here so here we can use the same fixture as a clamped clamped fixture in this clamped clamped fixture first this plate will come and hold the specimen here in the fixed position and this impactor will come and hit it okay you can see this is a you can see this is a fixed uh, this is a simple supported boundary condition fixture okay so here we are going to keep the specimen and we will put this springs loaded button so it will go and hold it the same holder specimen holder the same specimen holder that is for the 
this is we call the simple support retention simple supported specimen holder this is a fixed or clamped clamped boundary condition or this is especially for the chart test and you can i have just shown you here the same picture when these pins are going to press so it will just hold it in simple supported like conditions so these all are available here okay so let's see some tool what is actually happening here then it will be good for us to move forward so if we have already seen what we have actually seen we have seen this was the impactor this is the specimen here its initial velocity is zero its potential energy is mgh kinetic energy is zero but as soon as it will come and just and it will come in contact with the specimen it is having some final velocity that is under root 2 gh which we are using with the kinematics equations that is final velocity ka square initial velocity ka square plus of 2 a s we know this initial velocity is 0 a is minus g and h is equals to minus h so v f is equals to under root 2 g h okay here the potential energy will be zero and the kinetic energy will be maximum half mv final square at this point okay then but in this drop tower we will go and learn what is happened just after when this impactor come in contact with the specimen after that okay so here we can see that the total energy is the sum of kinetic energy plus of potential energy so how many variables are here we can see mass velocity and height three variables are here is it correct we know that velocity is a function of height if it's a free fall condition either we can increase the energy by increasing the height okay or if we are increasing the height the velocity will also increase this is dependent okay or we can increase the speed how we can increase the speed by increasing the height so these tools are dependent so at a time we have the two variables always either m mass and height or mass and velocity you can vary one thing at a time okay you have to keep one thing constant generally we are keeping the mass constant for a same type of testing or sometimes we are uh, keeping the height or velocity either of one thing we are generally keeping the constant okay so be sure to keep all of these things in the mind okay uh, now which variable is the most dangerous for the bullet when we are doing the testing for the ballistics then the velocity is the most important actually when we when we talk about the blast at a time energy absorption is important when we're talking about the bullet at a time the velocity is important okay what are the quantities we are obtained quantities we are obtained from the machine we have already told that there is a load cell which will measures the force and there is a sensor which will give us the time it will just note down the time when the, uh, this impactor comes in contact and when it is releases okay so we are getting the data maximum contact force which we are directly getting from the results of the load cell so it is a resistance by the material actually that's why we are again and again saying it is a contact force we will get the velocity time graph force velocity is we are directly getting from the machine okay getting from machine 
but from all of these data we are getting the velocity time graph and displacement time graph and energy time graph and many others time graph we can get maximum deflection energy absorption or dissipation so in the next few seconds we are going to learn how we are getting these curves when we are getting just only the force time graph actually the software of the instrom sees 9340 series will give us all this data directly but we should know how we are getting this okay so that is important i'm just going to our slides okay so i'm going to insert one more slide at you here so now let's first again i'm going and draw the diagram then you will understand it once again this is the impactor this is the tub this is tilted i don't want a tilted my figures will be wrong if the, my tub will be tilted so i want to be a good experimental test okay as soon as this impactor comes in contact with the specimen our whole theory is started okay so as soon as it is comes in contact we got the force versus time graph <coughs> the units are very essential but uh, soon i will tell you okay this will be in the newton or kilometer but time will be in milliseconds so as soon as it is come here we know it is having the some final velocity okay and we are going to say this is a coordinate that is x and y and our time has started from here actually here at this point our time is zero and at any other position inside the specimen when this will come when this tub holder will come and go inside it actually either it will puncture it or it will be displace the specimen so at any position time g okay what will be its velocity okay that is a very important thing which we have to learn okay so first of all up to here we know up to this point the oscillation is the free fall oscillations that is the a is equals to minus c but as soon as it will be entered we know okay well that's the very important thing i am again and again saying so velocity at at any time t is what this final velocity minus of the velocity as soon as it is entering in as it is striking the specimen or uh, so what is occurring there it is resisting so that is coming from the contact force divided by the mass divided by mass what is this actually this is the acceleration contact force by of mass into of this force is the function of time period dt okay function of time period dt so but this time period is from where to where actually i told this time t is equals to 0 when the tub is come in contact with the specimen and time t is equals to 0 to any time t and this will be up to the time it will be the Uh, the tub will come and uh, exit from the specimen if it will puncture 
easily or in any other factors. So we can see, we can find the velocity at any time t. Velocity at any time t is equals to v final velocity minus of this. Okay. Uh, you some can argue that is it still is still free fall condition inside when it is puncturing and coming inside the so we can go and use the gt term also but that is a very small so i'm just avoiding that term okay so we got the velocity from our force okay and time we have already there so we can plot velocity at any time t with respect to the time okay similarly similarly now the other condition is what will be the displacement what is the displacement so similarly we have find the velocity can we find the displacement okay can you tell me what is the velocity? Velocity is instantaneous velocity is dx by dt or limit delta t is tangent to 0 del x by del t. Okay. So from here can be okay. From here, what we can do can be integrate is velocity time dt is equals to dx, or we can write it dx is equals to v dt. We can go and integral it. But where is what is this velocity? We have just derived the velocity formula there v f minus of integral 0 to time period t force which is a contact force which is a function of time period divided by mass dt okay into of dt okay so from here so from here what we can say that this time period is varying from time t is equals to 0 to t and this is the x naught or we can say at x is equals to 0 to some x position okay that we can say the delta t very small displacement is there actually this delta which is a function of time period and we know this velocity in this case actually it is constant but still i am not bringing it out from there just saying the velocity the final velocity times of dt minus of integral time t is equals to 0 to any time t time 0 to t contact force time of t divided by mass dt into of dt so from here you have seen that we can even find the displacement with the help of this contact force just by integrating so we will get the curve how this impactor has displacement okay with respect to the time this time is in milliseconds so the, you know what's the important thing here the important thing here is what we are learning what we are learning we have not seen because uh, this contact force we are getting the load cell which is connected to the impactor so what the reaction this in this uh, uh, tap is getting the what the reaction this tap is getting okay that is it is recording so indirectly we are getting the reactions by the uh, we are getting the reaction by the specimen so we are getting the force versus time then we have got that velocity versus time then we got a displacement versus time then we got all of these things can we find the how much energy is absorbed by the material? What is the formula for the energy? Okay. So we know that energy is equals to half m. Half m initially actually but we can say that the final velocity that was the 
when it is just at the point of contact of the specimen minus of velocity at any time t okay so this is in the terms of velocity but can you imagine there is a one more term which will come here and that is very important because this is the specimen the effector come in contact okay but you know when this specimen come in contact hit hit here okay this specimen will go and move something like that will go and move something like that or it may have some uh, punctured here so the mass m g delta t the displacement of the specimen okay that is very important this mass has done some work here yes if the thickness generally the thickness is 3 mm to 6 mm for the cases of uh, composites okay generally for that cases uh, ignoring of these things may or may not depends upon the at which energy we are going to test okay so that is a very important term so like this we have explained you the theory of here ki what is actually happening and how we are getting that terms 